I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking with Carl Lansdowne about his deeply evocative book, The Torch of Christ. It takes readers on a profound journey through the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Drawing upon biblical narratives, the book elucidates the birth of Christ, his earthly journey beset with numerous trials, including persecutions, bigotry, hatred, and racism. All throughout, though, he showed an unwavering love for mankind. We're delighted to have Carl join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the folks at Authors Reputation Press for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel. Carl, thanks so much for being our guest today on Spotlight. Thank you. Let's start out by telling the folks at home what you mean by the torch of Christ. Yeah, first, let me say again, thank you so much for allowing me to be here in this spotlight today. I want to thank my wife and my children for their support. Most importantly, uh, I want to thank the Lord Jesus for allowing this day to happen so that we could have this uh, spotlight meeting. So again, thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, you well, the, the Torture Christ book was uh, written behind a movie that my wife and I were watching together where bigotry and hatred uh, down south was relevant. It was happening. And so uh, as a result of that, um, I'll put it in a nutshell, as a result of that, uh, my wife began to talk about these things and we're like, you know, wow, it's almost like uh, what Jesus had to go through, you know, um, as he walked the face of the earth. And so my wife came up with the word, you know, the torch. It's like passing the torch. And as a result of that, I came up with the idea of, wow, the torch of Christ. Hmm. Oh, and, and, and so I didn't know that it would, you know, that the Lord would bless me to write a book about it, hmm. you know. Uh, but it was the torture of Christ, and we, my wife and I, were talking about how he suffered. Mm -hmm. He went through uh, a lot of persecutions, and he didn't do anything that was negative to people. He was always positive, as you know, in his walk. And so the book arrived from that. And of course, through the blessed Holy Spirit, uh, he inspired me to write the book, The Torture of Christ. Absolutely. Our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is such a relatable God because he came to earth in human form and suffered like all of us. Yes. And I think that is a central theme of your book, that Christ knows the human experience, right? Yes, yes, yes. I agree with you 100%. And so, um, you know, from the beginning to the end, I mean, you know, he was he was born here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And the book is sort of portraying his life from the time that he was born through his journey. Yeah. And through his journey, as you know, again, he encountered many obstacles, mm -hmm. but yet um, he was passing it on, you know, and, 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 you know, and he didn't force anybody. He gave us choices. Mm -hmm. You and I, we have a choice. We can choose him or we can not choose him. Right. OK, he, he didn't say, I'm going to make you choose me. Yeah. No, he, he, he has given us a choice. However, he said, well, if you choose to go the way on the left at the end of your life, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. If you choose to go on the right at the end of your life, this is what's going to be happen. But most importantly, he never said that our journey would be easy. Yeah. No, no he didn't. He said that. Uh, we're going to face persecutions. We're going to face trials and tribulations. We're going to face all these things. But most importantly, what he said was to be of good cheer. I've overcome. And like you said earlier, you know, uh, we're going to face things. And it's just how we deal with it. You know, the beautiful part is uh, Christ never pulled out a gun yeah. to shoot somebody because they didn't like him. He just said, you know what? I got it. I understand. And what did he say? Love them that hate you. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. And, and to turn the other cheek and yes, uh, to uh, take the abuse at times rather than fighting back. Was there something new or different you learned about Jesus when you were doing your research for the book? Yeah, actually, you know, again, it's the choices. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's what I sort of kind of got in after doing the research and looking at every. You know, it, it was the choices that we make 
And I looked at that and said, you know what? Uh, he, you know, he didn't uh, treat us like we were puppets on a string. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a freedom of choice. Right. And so I, then, I, you know, as I was going through writing these things, I also looked at, well, wait a minute. He, he already told us that we're going to face the challenges. Wow. OK. He already told us that we we're going to go through all these things and looking way back and looking ahead of all that is going on today. Well, wait a minute. You know, it's like your, your, it's like your mom or your dad that told you, son, daughter, no, you cannot use my car. Right. OK. And yet, what do we do? We ask him, can, can, I, can, I, can I take the car? When dad's already said, and, and mom and dad may look at you like you lost your mind because I've already told you, but they don't answer. Right. They don't answer. And it's like, it's like the Lord, he's already given us everything. And so when something that doesn't go right, uh, we, we, we don't understand why. He goes, well, the Lord didn't answer me. Yes, he did. It's like your dad and your mom told you, yeah. no, you're not going to that party tonight. <laughs> exactly. And that's exactly. what I got out of the research and things like that. Do you feel that this book is kind of a guide for readers to use their faith and to believe in God and trust in God during difficult times and personal struggles? Yes, actually, um, I believe this book is, I mean, it's also for the seasoned uh, believers, but I think it's for the, the, the beginners. You know, those who really uh, may not know him, those who may go through different things, uh, those who may not understand, it's, it, 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 you know, to understand what is love all about? Right. What is hope all about? And I, I, I believe it is, it is. And it also, it, it talks about yourself. You know, in, in the book, you know, there, there are things that say, well, what would you do if that was you? How would you feel? You know, you know, there's a place in the Bible where, uh, well, in the book where uh, when the, 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 the angel appeared to uh, Mary and let her know that she's going to have a child. Mm -hmm. And then Joseph finds out about it. And Joseph was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to deal with this or not. <laughs> and so, you know, and the angel appeared to Joseph and said, Joseph, fear not. Take Mary as you want. So I asked the question in a book, what would you have done if that was you? Right. If you were a woman and you've been with a woman all this time, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, you find out that she's with child. Right. What would you do? Yeah. And so these are the kind of things that is in the book to, to, to question you so that you can look at it and say, you know what? I'm no better than, uh, I'm no better than brother Logan. Right. I'm no different than he is. The only difference between the two of us is that we have skin color differences. Right. And, yeah. And, and yeah, we're all humans. We all have the same struggles or we all have struggles. The struggles might be different for each person. That is correct. Uh, yes. A clergy person once said to me, and it really stuck with me, that life is hard. And once you accept the fact that life is hard, it becomes easier. And <laughs> I think yes. that's the lesson of uh, Jesus as well, that, you know, there are yes. tough times. He was betrayed by everyone who swore to be by him and to love him. You know Exactly. That is correct. And who hasn't been betrayed in this life? You know, you can't live more than a few months before betrayal, you know, is part of it. And pain is part of it and hurt is part of it. Um, tell me a little bit about your spiritual journey. How did you get your love for the Lord? And uh, <laughs> are you a churchgoer? Tell me a little bit about that. Um, uh, you know, um, wow. <laughs> I'm trying to put it in a shell. Um, when I was about 10 mm -hmm. years of age uh, or nine, eight, my aunt's friend uh, used to read the Bible to me and tell stories. He was, you know, a, a guy that taught a Sunday school class. And in that, uh, you know, uh, I began to, I listened. And so as years went by, uh, I think I was about 16 years old, 17 years old. And uh, uh, nobody was in my mom's house. 
you know, and so um, um, I'm praying mm -hmm. in the bedroom. And all of a sudden, I heard my name called. I had no clue. I ran out and I thought I was needed to go get some uh, groceries because they'd gone to the store to help unload groceries and nobody was in the house. And I paid no attention to that. Years moved on. Uh, I began to, well, let me go back for, 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 be, my grandmother raised me and my grandfather raised me, okay, from childbirth on up, mm -hmm. which I got a good foundation and understanding of a lot of things until they got sick. And I think I was about eight or nine having to move with my parents. Mm -hmm. But moving forward, um, I began to read the Bible at the age of six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I have no idea of how to, I mean, I just enjoyed picking it up and I'd read about maybe two or three verses and I put it down. Yeah. And I have my mom's Bible today, this huge Bible that she had bought a long time ago. And from there, um, I, I discovered at about 13, 14 years old when I was baptized, gave my life to Christ, that I started reading the Bible more and understanding about, wow, wait a minute. God chose me. Right. Ah, and then looking at my history, you know, uh, there were pastors in my family. Um, my my dad be, be, that I didn't know at the time because my mom and dad went out together. Well, he was a pastor. His grandfather was a pastor, and on down the line. So I look at this thing and said, "Wow, okay, I come from a bloodline of pastors." Mm. Now I understand, you know, and so from there. Uh, I, I was with the uh, Church of God. Uh, I was with the uh, Assemblies of God. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, I was the uh, interim pastor for Pentecostal Holiness Church. And from there, uh, I was a Christian education director in the Church of God. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, I realized something. Wow, this is beautiful. But yet, I'm not doing what God really called me to do. And what did he say? Go out there, okay, and tell them, baptize them, you know, as he said at the end of the verse. So uh, now we have a ministry called the Lamb of God Family Ministries, and we have a church of our walls. And so right. before COVID, uh, we did a lot of Bible studies uh, and had uh, 25, but sometimes 30, sometimes 10, sometimes 25, 40 people come to our Bible studies and one-on-one -on -one counseling. I enjoy doing that uh, because there are a lot of hurting people out here. Yeah. And that's basically uh, the, the, the story. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. That is interesting that you came from such a long line of pastors. So obviously theology and religion and uh, faith in Jesus is in your blood. Tell me a little bit about writing this book. Did it feel like inspiration? How long did it take you? Tell us a little <laughs> bit about that process. I ran. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I ran. I mean, it, it was something that, you know, I'd start on occasion and I was okay. You know, and other books I've started, and, you know. Uh, but it, this one here, I believe the Lord wrote. Mm -hmm. He just used me with the pen. Right. He wrote it. And so, uh, he was harassing me. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, all right, you want me to write, you want me to write this book. So that's what I did. Hmm. And through him, um, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, 10, 11, 12, one o'clock in the morning, I'm getting a writing. And so, uh, you know, uh, he inspired me. Yeah. And this is the first one. I mean, I have many others that I've started. <laughs> right. I've, I've started, but right. there, you know, but this one here, I think he said, you know what? Um, see, I, I chose you to do something, yeah. but you being hard headed. Okay. So now I need to intervene and, you know, and so that's, <laughs> that's where <laughs> I am. 
Yeah. He applied a little pressure, got you to write it, and you were an instrument of his love and an instrument of his word. So that is wonderful. Who was the first person you gave the book to when you were done said, hey, read this? My wife. <laughs> <laughs> my wife was the first one that uh, I gave, and my wife was the uh, one that um, I said, honey, what do you think about this? And so she would read certain things, and then God would touch her, and she would say, well, I think you need to do this, say this, and say that. And right. so we, we, we basically did it together. Mm -hmm. We took action on it together. Um, but that's sort of kind of how it happened. I, I, I did a lot of research, um, you know, uh, looking at Pat, looking at scriptures and looking at different uh, things like that. And through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you know, um, and, and praying, right. <laughs> you know, asking the Lord, Lord, um, and, and, and before we had this interview this morning, I said, Lord, if this is of you, then you allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all about you, not about me. You know, and uh, it's, it's a, it, prayerfully, this book will reach people that will help them. Okay. You know, um, as you know, being a believer, uh, there's nothing new that's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at if you look at the scripture, read the Bible. But if you look at what's happening in this world today, everything that the Bible talks about in this world today, the wars, the rumors of wars, the earthquakes, the famine, they're all happening. And, you know, the, the, the Lord basically gave us the roadmap. Right. And that and that's where it, that's how I've uh, done it. Absolutely. When you look around the world today. You mentioned things haven't changed. When you look at some of the concepts you explore, like persecutions, bigotry, hatred, racism, do you feel like things are getting better? Do you think they're, they're, they're getting worse? Do you think that uh, people are drifting away from God too much, need to drift back more? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, according to the word of God, there was going to be a falling away. Mm. Okay. And so uh, based on what the word of God says, uh, from let's let me go back from the time that I was young, okay, and you can probably say the same thing from the time you were young, things were different. Yeah. But as, as we've gotten older and as time has gone on, a lot of things have changed. Right. People, people are, 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 are selfish, more selfish. Uh, I don't know if hatred has escalated. Maybe uh, hatred was way deeper was before I was born in, in yeah. this world, but the selfishness, the hatred, uh, there's a whole bunch, even the confusion of the word of God. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, Jesus didn't say uh, for me to be a Catholic. He didn't say for me to be a Protestant or Baptist. No, he just said, follow me. Right. Uh, think, think about, think about the man that was on the cross yeah. with Jesus. It was three men, right? Yeah. Well, two men. Jesus was the third. And one man said, save yourself and us too. The other man said to the other man, we, know, we, we deserve this. We've done some crazy stuff. We've probably murdered people. We've probably stuck. We've done all these things. He said, but this man have done nothing right. to deserve death. And so he looked at Jesus and, and he said to Jesus, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And Jesus said to that man, today, you will be with me in paradise. Oh. But you know what Jesus did not say to that man? Uh, uh, go out and change your life. Right. Go out and get baptized. Go out. Go out. He, no. That, all, that, all Jesus wanted that man to do was to believe in him. Yeah. You know, and so we ministers, I had to say, oftentimes think that uh, we have to do different things in order to be saved. No, God never said that. He said, be, He said, believe in me. And, and so, and, and that's where I am in looking at this world and uh, getting back to the question where you ask, things are changing. Right. And Jesus, and Jesus said, I'm telling you this so that you will see these things as they're happening. Okay. And that's where we are. I think I think eventually, yeah, I think eventually this this world that we live in or uh, let's just say this world is going to be a horrible change eventually. 
because if it does not change and does not get worse or does not happen the way the Lord said it's going to happen ever, then he lied. Right. But he didn't lie. So we know that things will change, that uh, the second coming is coming. Um, and I think you put it very uh, eloquently before when you were talking about Jesus on the cross. And that's the simple message of he who believes in me shall never die. And that's amen. a very, amen. It's a hopeful note to leave the audience with today. The name of the amen. book is The Torch of Christ. It is an amazing work. It looks at the life and the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered like you suffered. And this will be a guide for you to realize that there is hope, that there is a light, and that there is a loving Jesus and a loving God. It's been written by Carl Lansdowne, and we are delighted to have him here today on Spotlight. Carl, thank you for joining me. I thank you so much again for having me. And uh, again, that you be blessed in, in, in what you're doing. I, I truly enjoyed, and uh, thank you so much again. Thank you. I enjoyed our conversation as well. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.